What's up guys? Today we have our buddies Mazda in the shop and as you guys can see it has some pretty gnarly scratches right here on the fender which we want to go ahead and take care of it for him. We don't have too much time with the vehicle so we're going to do something quick just to, cut, just to get rid of these scratches and just get them out the door. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to clean the surface. As you guys can see it's dusty. You definitely don't want to start polishing when the vehicle is dusty because the last thing that you want to do is scratch up your vehicle even more. So we're just going to quickly clean it up with some speed wipe. We're going to spray that directly onto the fender. We're going to grab a premium microfiber towel and we're simply going to wipe off any kind of dust and any kind of grime that's on the surface, making sure that we flip our towel. That way we don't cause any kind of scratches or swirls because really like, that's basically where all these scratches and swirls come from. They come from improper washing techniques. Um, in this case, it actually came from a dog, believe it or not. So. Uh, the owner's vehicle had his dog jump on the vehicle and the claws, you know, they just got the best of his paint and you can see right here extremely that there's a pretty gnarly gash right here as well as down here as well. I have my LED inspection light which I'll go ahead and pull out just in case it's not too noticeable on camera. So let me just go ahead and wave this over so you guys can see the type of damage that I'm talking about. So as you guys can see, it's pretty decent damage that you definitely don't want sitting on your vehicle. Now, given there are some other scratches and swirls underneath, we will work to take care of that, but really primarily we're working on these heavier scratches. So the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna prep the surface. So we're just gonna go ahead and clay it. Now, clay bar is a great way to decontaminate the surface before you do any kind of polishing work. And it's very easy to do. All you wanna do is start off with a clean surface, grab yourself some clay luber, spray some lubricant directly onto the area. And then in this case, it doesn't necessarily matter if you get on the plastic, there's no wax or anything in here whatsoever, so you're not gonna damage your plastics. And remember, we're only doing this for surface prep, so we just wanna make sure that there's absolutely no embedded contamination in the area that we're gonna, put, that we're gonna polish. Just because if there is uh, embedded contamination, you can possibly damage your paint even worse. So this is just to ensure that we remove any kind of impurities sitting in the paintwork. And then just like that, we're just focusing on this section. Now I'm gonna grab my towel. I'm gonna flip it onto the inside part that's not dirty, just to buff off the residual of the clay luber. All right guys, so at this point in the process, after cleaning it, it's not gonna look any better just because clay bar is not intended to remove scratches and that's just one thing I do wanna bring up. A lot of people are under the misconception that clay bars can remove scratches. It just does not. So now we're gonna prep the surface by masking off this plastic trim because we're gonna start using a compound and a polish to remove these scratches and the last thing that we wanna do is get the compound and polish residue on the plastic trim. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mask them off with some tape real quick. All right guys, so we just finished masking off the trim. Now we can go ahead and start polishing. Now one thing I do wanna say just real quick, I apologize for any kind of background noise or anyone walking around the background. Like I said, we have a very limited time to work on this, so we just gotta get this thing in and out as quick as possible. So now that we have this ready to go, now we can start polishing. So right here I have our Torque 10FX DA polisher and I have it equipped with a three inch backing plate and a four inch pad because as you guys can see, it's a smaller area to work with. We don't need a five inch or a six inch because it's just overkill. It's just way too much pad for a way too, way too, way too much pad for way too small of a section. Yeah, that's it. So now we have right here our V-Line. Now our V-Line, we have a full lineup of compounds and polishes. Now I know a lot of you guys out there get confused with our V-Line just because you know you think compound polish, what's the need for having so many of them? Well, in reality, we have two compounds, two polishes, V32, V34, those are um, compounds, 36 and 38 are polishes. Now, when it comes to something like this, just from experience, I can tell you guys for a fact right now that something like this is not just gonna come off with a fine polish like V38. And that's just because it's not intended to remove those kind of deep scratches. So for something like this, we're gonna start off with V34, which is a great starting off point because this is a hybrid compound. So this right here, it cuts like a compound and it starts to kind of get your paint ready in preparation for that polishing phase. So what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna apply about three drops. 
All right, so now that we have our three drops of product on our pad, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we're gonna focus on this top scratch first because you don't wanna stretch the product too much. You wanna make sure that you use it exactly where you need it. So we're gonna go ahead and blot it out on this top scratch right here. Then once you blot it out, then you can turn it on to speed setting one to just kind of spread it out just a little bit more. You don't have to spend too much time spreading it out, just spread it out where it's just nice and uh, even, and then you can go ahead and start cutting. So for the cutting process, we're gonna turn the machine up to a higher speed setting because what we wanna do is we wanna break down the abrasives that are within V34. So if you guys ever experience uh, using this product, if you guys touch the product itself, you'll feel that it's like grainy, and that those grains are the abrasives that are within the product that you have to go ahead and break down with the heat that the machine produces. So that's basically where the cutting uh, process starts so we're gonna go ahead and get right into it we're gonna go ahead and start cutting and then basically once the product becomes clear we'll wipe it off we'll inspect the results and we'll see whether or not if we have to do another pass or if we're good to go with a polish and just start refining All right, so we just finished breaking down the product and it became fully clear, but I just wanna be transparent with you guys. You can actually see that the scratch is actually still there. It's way less noticeable, but you can actually see that it's actually still there. I'll wave my light over it, that way you guys can kind of see a, a little bit better. But the reason I wanted to point this out is because we, we just wanna show that you're not always gonna get on the first pass. You know, like we make it look very easy on the videos. We make it just like, you know, you do a one pass and you're all done, when in reality, like, it actually may take you two or three passes, just because that's just how deep the scratches in your paint work. So what I'm gonna do right now, just because I want this to look perfect, is I'm gonna go ahead, put three more drops of V34 onto my pad, and I'm gonna give it another pass until it becomes clear, and then we'll inspect the results, and then, then we can really figure out if it's that much deeper, then we can go with something more aggressive like V32, or if it comes out good, then we can just start refining with V36 or 38. Wait. Alright guys, so we just finished doing this section. Now, second pass, it does look way, way better, but I will say this, I honestly think that the damage on this fender in terms of like this specific scratch, it might have just gone a little bit too deep because you can actually see it like imprinted on underneath the actual panel itself. So I know it sounds kind of crazy, but you can actually see like the actual scratches like with it. It's almost like dented into the panel with the paint just kind of like pushed down into it. So. Unfortunately for this, I honestly think it's too far gone for us to do anything much more to it besides just to refine it. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off our orange pad, put on our white polishing pad, and make sure that's always like centered as best as possible. And to be completely honest with you guys, I think we're just gonna have to hope for the best in terms of what this will look like afterwards. So um, right now what we'll do is we'll hit it with some jeweling polish like some V38. And remember guys, this is a very, very fine, ultra fine polish. So with this one right here, you're gonna use it the exact same way. You're just gonna wanna apply a couple drops. In this case, we'll do three. We'll set that down. 
And then we'll just go ahead and hit the section one more time, just with a finer approach like V38. And the polishing stage is really just intended to refine your paintwork. It's just uh, designed to like smoothen it out, bring out the utmost clarity and shine possible. That way you have the best finish possible. So we're just gonna go ahead and work this in. Same exact process as we did with V34, but now with V38. All right, so now that we're done working that in, we're gonna grab a fresh microfiber towel, buff off the excess, and just inspect our final results here. How's it look on your end? Looks good, like you definitely like, you took the majority of it off. All right guys, so we just finished it up and as you guys can see, pretty drastic difference from what we started with to what we have right now. Now, one thing I do wanna to touch upon is, you know, this is your paint. Anytime you polish your paint to an extent, you're wearing down your clear coat, so, this I would consider about a 95% rate restoration. I'll take that all day, any day, just because from what you had before to what you have right now, it's a lot less noticeable. And to be completely honest, you as the owner, you're probably gonna be the only one that notices it just because it's your car, your baby, and you know it's always gonna be there. But just know this, other people, they're not gonna see what's going on right here. So at this point of the process, once you're done polishing, you can basically choose to either A, leave it as is, or B, I would honestly recommend strongly recommend that you apply protectant. Um, if you are gonna go through the hassle of washing your car, cleaning it, polishing it to perfection, I would say apply ceramic coating. And if you are gonna apply ceramic coating, I would say so apply something like uh, Carbon Force, which is a five year long ceramic coating. Uh, if you wanna do something that's a little bit more easier, a little bit more not as time consuming, you can do something like our Hydro Slick ceramic coating Hyper Wax, which is a great alternative to ceramic coat your vehicle, that'll last you up to 12 months. And then if you wanna just do something quick and on the fly, like how we have right now, I would honestly say, just spray some spray sealant on there like VL7 and call it a day. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish polishing up the scratches down here. I'm gonna take off the masking tape. I'm just gonna spray some spray sealant on there and then we're gonna get this customer on the way. And hopefully we can bring him back in so we can tackle the rest of the scratches on the rest of the car, so. We're gonna leave it off here. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a huge like. If you guys aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And if you guys wanna pick up any of the products that we use on today's video, you can pick them up directly on our website, chemicalguys.com. You can also check out the pinned comment and the description down below to see the links to all of these products specifically. And you can also pick them up at your local detail garage store. As always, my name is Joey, this is Chemical Guys. We'll see you next time. Oh! <laughs>